plate uh, sticklers for uh, you know observing the bank holidays. Yeah, well, good for them. Oh, good for them. Mm. Yeah, but they, but as I say, they didn't today. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Mm. But, but there we are. Yeah. So so um, I must say I was quite pleased with my blogs over the over the weekend on the uh, the sit reps situation reports. <clears throat> I, I I read an article on off guardian well i was reading i think it was on saturday and it wasn't the article itself it by someone called ian curtin i think and i think i've read their stuff before and nothing wrong with the article it's absolutely fine except it's like every other article uh, which of oh. themselves is fine but i really I, it just dawned on me i'm absolutely sick to death of people telling me fucking stories do you know, like if if you're going to explain the big picture, I get it. Yeah, you you tell a story, right? But with you know this whole idea of narrative and spin doctors and stick to the narrative, and um, it just dawned on me everybody is is doing that like crazy, but doing it all the time. And mm. and and <clears throat> what I figured was was this right. The the last two and a half years, OK, is a solution looking for a problem. The solution being the Great Reset, OK, um, has uh, been applied to a problem that wasn't a, the, a problem, i.e. The, 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 pan, the, the pandemic around right which i which i've taken the call in response to the 2020 flu season right now the the solution looking for the problem that's been applied to a made up problem okay hasn't taken root and so now we know what the solution looking for a problem is okay the problem's gone away and the people promoting that solution looking for a problem, i.e. the Great Reset, are now scrabbling around trying to say, oh, well, we've got we've got to apply this solution. But they've actually shown that they, they've revealed their cards. Right. So. On that basis, what, what I'm trying to get across to people is, look, we've won the 99 percent has won, albeit by default, in that the solution looking for a problem that has sought to apply itself um, to the problem that doesn't exist has not got itself across the line. So, you know, they haven't they haven't won. So it's arguable whether we have won or not. But right now it's our go. And we must start acting like it is our go. And when it's your go, OK, you don't boo and uh, look at what the other side is doing with their solution looking for a problem that isn't, you know, that's applied to something that isn't a problem. What you do is you say, right, we're going to win this race and we want to get over the line so we win and this is what we want to do now as the cards of the other side have been revealed okay so this is the transhumanist agenda the social point scoring system some some sort of hard half uh hard half for white people we could call it that yeah so <laughs> i like that that's a fucking good title roger i like that a lot you knew i would please continue <laughs> so um We've got various other other clues have cropped up as well as we've gone along, right? Elon Musk buying Twitter, and this is going to be my last word on this, okay? He's not buying Twitter for freedom of speech. He is buying it to augment his own investment position as regards data as the new gold, okay? Now, he is actually treading on the toes of the big tech 
data people under the um, NSA banner, right? He operates really under the DARPA banner. And DARPA is the uh, fascist state arm of the US fascist state for technology, high technology, military technology, right? So under SpaceX and and with Tesla, with autonomous vehicles and robotics and stuff, okay, that's which part of it Elon Musk comes under. Twitter comes under NSA. And so this is surveillance capitalism. Now, it's uh, through Tesla, Elon Musk has a finger in that pie because the real value in Tesla is the absolute trove of data to do with autonomous vehicles, autonomous driving and the habits of drivers driving those cars, which are recording all of that data whilst not using all the functionality. Right. And and, and you'll find countless um interviews with, with with Elon Musk where he basically says you know but our main value is this data so it's, it's not like he's up operating unaware of that and also the share price of Tesla speaks to that right but nonetheless okay he's trying to take over Twitter is is basically trying to take someone else's slice of the pie in the same way that at the beginning of all of this Mark Zuckerberg when he tried to interview it introduced Libra which was the cryptocurrency right here's a data surveillance guy trying to muscle in on the um, identity based ARDHA um, point system for currency thing right and he got pushed back. He got slapped down quite a lot for doing that. Li Libra mm. crashed and burned, uh, not because it wouldn't have worked, but because Zuckerberg was basically, again, trying to get someone else's slice of the pie. And so what 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 what's emerged in my sort of um, going direct paradigm mind map? OK, is is in in the bit to do with the the factions of the oligarchy, so the military industrial complex, OGAM, which is oil, gas and mining and fire sectors, which is finance, insurance and real estate. OK, those those are the three main groupings as defined by Michael Hudson, OK, in his book, Super Imperialism. Um, and. Um, the. Military industrial complex encompasses NSA and DARPA, of course, but you can divide that down. Obviously, finance, insurance and real estate is the uh, the currency system, whatever. So there are overlaps in these things. Right. But the 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 philanthro capitalists or, or, or the, you know, basically the feudal overlords that we know as philanthropists are not oligarchs if they are white and speak with an, uh, an American accent or something, you know, so, you know, the waspy ones, as it were, um, they have specific areas of influence. And what what's been happening the last two years is an expansion of the share capital of World Incorporated, right, and the major shareholders who are the philanthro capitalist billionaire class have not been diluted right now my lot are the load a load around that right so the technocrats the entrepreneurs the you know the people who do all the work right um they are not issued with the new capital right so they do accept dilution going forward but their compensation for accepting that dilution is first go with the newly minted debt based money. Right. And uh, so I mean, I figured all this out because obviously I'm trying to capitalize a new business and, you know. Merchant banks disappeared through the noughties. Right. After 2008. Um, you, you had hedge funds and then hedge funds have kind of morphed into the wealth management, the big uh, asset managers 
like BlackRock, right? And again, this is another part of the revealing of the hand, the going direct paradigm as defined by BlackRock um, going into the autumn of 2019 and the repo spike and basically the banks crashing at that point, right? Then the solution for the non-problem, okay? The non-problem was the response to COVID-19. The real problem was the sticking plaster coming off the financialized economy, which was kind of bandaged up. You know, triage was applied in 2008, but it had basically become threadbare already by 2015. But by 2019, you know, that, that exploded again. And for the so so in this interim period, right, the real solutions are behind what's been put forward for um, uh, the the response to the to, to 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 the pandemic, right? But all of those responses are really for fixing this financialized economy, but they've laid their cards on the table. So when I say Mark Carney fluffed his lines at COP26, he gave us a number, 130 trillion, right? Committed to the, 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 the green building back better, right? Now, what you have to do is, is then compare that to um, the old pretend money system and how much that is. And then you've got... Um, you, you you have an idea of where what the enlarged capital base will be, which the people around that get to spin up or multiply up in what people understand as fractional reserve banking. So that bit of the textbooks that says you have the the core money and then people lend against reserves and stuff. The fact that hasn't been happening for the last 25 years, if ever, I well, uh, it has happened like that. So um, we know for certain that certainly in the ECB area by 2015, when Richard Werner published his paper about tracking the, you know, i.e. a European mid-sized bank didn't actually uh, accept deposits before creating credit. The credit was created and then the security was was basically written up afterwards, etc. Right, that that stuff. Well, um, it may well be that 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 the new solution, which is being brought in behind, or as the solution for the problem that wasn't a problem, right? But there was a problem, and that was the financial system coming completely unstuck. Right. So it's the solution to the problem that wasn't the problem, but is a muted solution or the preferred solution of the people that want to solve the unadmitted problem, which was the financial blow up of 2019, the repo spike. Right. So there's quite a lot of things sort of coming in different directions. Then. So then the next thing, then my discovery this morning. I went on my HSBC personal banking app and a new tab has appeared and the new tab is open banking. Open banking is now on the HSBC personal banking app. Right. So they're openly doing open banking. Well, um, and, it, and do it, they do they sell it to you as an idea or do they just go, look, shiny open banking? No, it's it, it's just appeared and there's a drop down menu. And what it does is it allows it exposed. It allows third parties to determine what happens to the funds in your bank account. Hold on. Hold on. It allows third parties to do what? To um, determine what happens to funds in your bank account. It's a precursor thought... to digital currencies is what it is. But... Okay, but I thought open banking in principle was allowing your data to be mined um, in order for you to receive better services, according to the PR for open banking. They say, but the, the, what yeah. the app actually yeah. allows 
do. Everybody knows if you book a hotel room uh, with a with with, with, with with a credit card, that the merchant actually can reserve an amount against your credit card. So it's it's pre-approved or whatever. So they know they're going to get paid when you check out because that much, you know, they, they make sure you've got much credit left, right? Open banking in the HSBC app actually allows the person that puts money into your account, if it was, it, it's like a refund or if it's uh, some sort of uh, payment from central government or local authorities, and they can then make sure the money they pay into your account is actually used for the purpose that they want it to be. It's basically programmable money, right? So basically... Uh, okay, gonna... okay, okay. So, so, so hold on. So just to double check. Sorry, Roger. Mm -hmm. So just to double check, what you're saying is that if someone deposits money in your bank account, then they have a say over where it goes or, or yeah, they can yeah. track where it goes. One of the two. Yeah. The, the functionality is built in that someone will say, what well, what's going to happen is this. If you are in receipt of, say, child allowance from the government, right, that child allowance will be programmed to only be spent on things that your child can use. Now, I'm not saying that's necessarily a bad thing, but it, if you expand if you expand it out, employers could do it with wages. Right. The functionality is there. So so it's basically functionality built into a private bank account to facilitate a social point scoring system. And open banking is part of that is what I'm saying. And central bank programmable uh, currencies is part of that, too.